OpenVPN, water cooling, and more. I'm Shannon Morse, and you are watching Hack 5. Yeah. Yeah, hook me up, I'm ready. This week's episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by the United States Air Force, GoToAssist Express, Got a great idea? It all starts with a great domain, domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen and this is your weekly dose of Technolust. We have a great show for you today. Shannon's talking about some awesome VPN stuff in the upcoming Snubs report and, well, we're doing a little bit of wireless. No, we're doing overclocking. No, we're, I gotta level with you. I, I first started out trying to do an awesome uh, Wi-Fi segment for you guys and it's totally coming. We are going to be taking one of these little uh, atom boards here and turning them into an awesome wireless access point to go along with our awesome homebrew wireless or our uh, wired router using uh, untangled or PF sensor what have you. But um, learned a lot recently as I, as I should have known about wireless with Linux and as you guys know in the past when we've done things with like packet sniffing with Linux and wireless, um, it's very specific as to what hardware you can actually use. And that all has to do with the chipset and what modes that it can go into. So you guys know my favorite here, the, uh, the Alpha. This is the Alpha Networks, uh, it's, it's the G version, the AWUS036H. This is the uh, wireless uh, USB adapter that I use when I want to do a little bit of packet sniffing and it's great for that. It uses a Realtek 8187 chipset which is able to go into monitor mode and that's what allows us to fire up Kismet and all these other fun tools and be able to sniff what's in the air without associating with an access point. But when it comes to actually creating an access point, we don't care about setting our card into monitor mode. What we care about is setting it into master mode. So a couple different modes. There's ad hoc which would be if you know, just a bunch of laptops talking to each other or something. And then there's managed, which is what you would use if you, your laptop were connecting to an access point. And that's what most people use is managed. And then master is if you were creating an access point, there's repeater, there's secondary if you're creating a mesh, uh, and then there's monitor for, again, the, the sniffing and the fun stuff there. But it all comes down to what the chipset supports. And unfortunately, there's not like an easy way to tell because while well, you can just plug, you know, say a USB Wi-Fi dongle into your Linux machine, you can run LS USB and it'll display, you know, the chipset, all that stuff, you can figure it out, right? And you can go to a couple of wikis and find out what chipsets support what, but then finding an actual device that has that chipset can prove very difficult, especially when, say, it's a, uh, I don't know, a Linksys or a D-Link or Netgear, a uh, USB Wi-Fi dongle, you know, model number X whatever, version 2000 has, say, a Broadcom, version 3000 has a raw link vision, version 4000 may have an Atheros, who knows? And it can get really difficult trying to actually buy something that has the correct chipset, especially when you go to a brick and mortar like I made the mistake of doing. So that's my lesson learned there. But I will say uh, that I, I do have some leads on some awesome chips that we'll be getting some in and we're going to be building an awesome wireless access point with that. Just wanted to let you guys know that the chipset is super important. So I'll have those on our forms and everything, all the model numbers that I'm using. Um, and a great place, a great resource to finding out what chip is in what device is wireless.kernel.org. They've got a, a great site there where you can figure it all out. Um, so. <laughs> I just went down to the store thinking, sure, I'm just going to pop into, you know, Fry's or Micro Center or whatever and pick up a, a $50 Wi-Fi dongle, come home and build an awesome wireless access point. That would be awesome. Except that didn't happen. Um, I, I was actually, you know, uh, I found some uh, sales associates that were nice enough to actually let me plug in a couple of wireless uh, dongles that I had some, you know, good feelings about and unfortunately wasn't able to find one that worked. So. Instead of getting the $50 USB dongle, I ended up dropping a grand on a new i7 rig. But I, I totally needed it for editing. And this is what has led me to what we're also going to do, and that is working with the Corsair H50, as we talked about last week, doing a little bit of water cooling. I thought it would be awesome to just go ahead and pop a, uh, 
a Core i7 920 in here and overclock it to four gigahertz. It totally is, is feasible. And if I had spent a little bit more time doing research on the motherboard, that would have easily happened. So as I said, I got a 920 in here and it's using the uh, EVGA, uh, what is it called, the FTW3. It's the X58 motherboard, it's the For the Win 3, and for me it's been full of lose. Um, and then namely, it's, it's not actually the overclocking, I can do that just fine. I've gotten this thing up to you know, 3.8 with air cooling and haven't even you know, unboxed the water cooler yet. So that's not the issue, but the issue with this motherboard, and there's an issue with every motherboard, is that it, does, it drops out RAM. So I'm in Windows and hey, check that out, I've got six gigs of RAM installed, and not cheap RAM either, you know, what, spent the extra to get some Corsair RAM, uh, 1600 megahertz with, uh, you know, CAS 7 latency, so some good stuff there, but this drops it out as soon as you start to overclock, and reading piles and piles and piles of forms and fiddling with every voltage and timing setting known to man, uh, finding that there is not a real answer. If you go to the EVGA forums, you find that lots of people have this exact problem, and they've all either moved on to a different motherboard or they all had a different solution that worked for them. And I'm, I'm tired of standing on my left foot and, and trying to tweak a jumper or something. So, lesson learned, should do a little bit more research when it comes to motherboards because they all have issues. And I'm probably going to trade to another motherboard that has a different issue. But losing RAM, not an issue that I want to deal with. So, anyway, I figured that I would let you guys know that that's my work in progress, that's what I'm up to, and when it comes to forums, please, 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 if you post in a forum, hey, I'm having XXX problems, somebody else is like, oh yeah, me too, don't come back a week later and say, oh, it's fixed. Please tell us, oh, it's fixed, and here's what I did. Yes. Okay. So with that rant totally out of the way, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, Shannon is going to learn us up on some awesome VPN stuff using your Google account. Are you really going to wear that all night, Colleen? Really, I'm just saying, even if hypothetically cooties were real, I don't have them. Well, you look ridiculous. You know there's an easier way to protect yourself, right? Just head over to circlecircle.org. It's amazing how people will believe just about anything if there's a website for it. But what's even more amazing is how incredibly inexpensive it is to get a domain these days. I mean, look at Domain.com. They make it unbelievably easy to get your website online because they've got all the fixings and none of what you don't need. See? Ow! Whether you're hosting your resume or starting a website about make-believe vaccines, great ideas start with great domains. And Domain.com's been making it easy and affordable for the last 10 years. They're a one-stop shop for domain names, reliable Linux and Windows hosting, and virtual private servers. And best of all, you can get 15% off your next order when you use coupon code HAK5 at checkout. That's HAK5 for 15% off at Domain.com. Got a great idea? It all starts with a great domain. Domain.com. You're here and your files are there. It's an age-old conundrum with as many solutions as I have reasons to love Yorkshire Terrier puppies. I love Yorkies. I really want one. Oh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, so Darren has delved into small office VPNs like Adido and OpenVPN last season, and I wanted to delve into something else that's a little bit more simple and effective. So this is GBridge. You can download GBridge over at gbridge.com and it has tons and tons of features. First of all, it's a free, yes, free software only solution for all versions of Windows. And it uses your Google account for verification. That's because it's a extension of the Google GTalk service. It can remotely control PCs, sync folders, share files, and chat securely and easily. You can share your desktop with your friends from anywhere in the world and automatically transverse firewalls and NATing routers without configuration. You can securely share and access files and let your friends view photos instantly without any download and 
Well, they don't have to do anything. It's completely remote. You can transfer and sync large files and folders to and from anywhere with no size restrictions. And you can use this nifty little tool called AutoSync, which lets you auto schedule, auto resume, and do incremental transfers. And you can also do this setup called auto recurring backups, so you can back up all your important folders to either your local machine or a remote, remote PC. I've gone ahead and connected to a box on our Hack5 Cloud Lab so that I can show you guys exactly how to set this up and how to share files and whatnot. So let's go ahead and get into that. Okay, so I've gotten connected. I'm gonna click on the download link and go to the download page on gbridge.com and start the download. Click yes a couple of times. Okay, so there's gonna be a pop-up and it says that I need to install the VPN driver. So I click okay and then I'm gonna wait for the install to finish. It might actually take a couple of minutes for it to finish but just leave that window open. If you close it, it's not going to finish for you. It actually says it right there for you. So also click allow if Windows tells you any warnings about downloading and installing, of course, and then click finish once it's done installing. Start GBridge. It's gonna ask you for your Gmail info, so I'm gonna put in my user ID and my password and the host name for my main computer. You can also create a new Gmail account or a Google Apps account if you really don't want to use your regular Gmail account for this. So I log in and the first thing I see is my friends list. It automatically includes all of my chat friends. Now at the top you can log off, you can invite friends by typing in their email, or you can add friends from your list of contacts. And you can also create new shares. To create a new share, click on the volume you wish to share, and then add any of your friends that you want to share this folder with. I'm going to add Darren, and then I'm going to password protect this volume. So I'm going to allow him, and there we go. My secure share is now created. Yay! To back up your folder onto the main machine or another machine, click the Add Easy Backup icon, and then choose the secure share, choose which machine you want to back up on, and then let the backup begin. To use desktop share, I click on the icon, choose configure, and then I change my settings. So I'm gonna allow in invitations to friends, and I'm gonna allow access from my other computers with a password. I can access my cute computer using GBridge from any of my other computers, but I just need to have my password. So that way, type in my password, and I can see my desktop from pretty much anywhere. So, all in all, I think GBridge is lightweight, it's easy, and it's free, so it's all good in my book. It's not going to replace your P2P or your IPsec VPN, but it will be up and running in minutes, and it's going to give you the majority of what you need. So what do you guys think? Email me at feedback at hack5.org, and I would like to thank our sponsor GoToAssist Express for making this snubs report possible. If you're in technical support, I want to tell you about an easy way to save time and money and make you look like a hero to clients and colleagues. Go to Assist Express, brought to you by our friends at Citrix, is an easy and secure remote support solution. With Go to Assist Express, you can see and solve the problem without being there in person. Go to Assist Express is specifically designed for small businesses and professionals to support clients. And the best part is that with GoToAssist, you don't have to pre-install software on your customers' machines, so you can instantly start supporting them online. Try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, you must visit GoToAssist.com slash hack5. That's GoToAssist.com slash hak5 for a free trial. Find more great tips like these at revision3.com slash GoToAssist Express. This week's trivia question is, this 90s era IDE and interpreter came with four pre-written example programs including Nibbles and Gorillas. Enter for your chance to win some Hack5 stickers at hack5.org slash trivia. And we'll be right back after a brief word from our sponsor. This is Titan 1-4. No signs of life. One four, hold your position. What do you got? Unmanned aircraft is identifying enemy sniper. Copy that. Let's move. Thanks, Reaper one one. We got it from here. Sensor's coming off target. 
Learn more at airforce.com. If you've got the Technoless, like Polly with his $100 Android tablet from China. Okay, I may be an iPhone kind of girl, but dude, I want one of those. And I think Kirby does too. Make sure to email us over at feedback at hack5.org with all of your Technolesty photos. Also, don't forget we have brand new hack packs over at hack5.org slash store. And the fastest and easiest way to subscribe and support your favorite podcast, hopefully that's us, is by subscribing on iTunes and YouTube. And last but not least, Hack 5's five year anniversary is coming up in August. Yeah, five years old, dude. Who'd have thought? I can't believe that. Five! Well, five years ago. Oh, time flies by so fast. Yeah, we're gonna be having a huge party in San Francisco. It's gonna be a blast. We're all gonna be there, me, Darren, hopefully other people that I can't think of. And we're gonna just have a great time. So follow us on Twitter and Facebook for all the details because we don't know what time it's gonna be yet or where. Yeah, so we'll get to that part. Yeah, so follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Make sure that you get all the details so that you can join us in August in San Francisco for our party. It's going to be epic. Until next time, I'm Shannon Morse. Remember to trust your technolust. Kirby. You look so cute in your different colored hat.